Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today, we are going to look at the brand new Microsoft Stream video experience in Microsoft 365. The reason I say new is there's also a classic stream experience, and we'll look at what some of those differences are. But first, what is stream and why would you use it? The easiest way to explain it is it's like YouTube, but for your school or organization. With Stream, you can create, upload, and also view videos. It's perfect for things like recording a meeting, a training session, or an event. Stream also has some really nice functionality. For example, with your videos, you get a transcript showing you who said what. You can also adjust the playback speed. This way, instead of attending that boring meeting, you can simply skip it and watch the recording at 2x speed. You're welcome, I just saved you some time. Stream also makes it really easy to distribute your videos throughout your organization. And who knows, maybe you'll be the next viral stream star in your company. In this video, we'll first start with what are some of the advantages of new stream versus classic stream? Then we'll look at how do you get started using stream? And then we'll wrap up with what are some of the exciting new features coming out soon? All right. Let's check this out. First off, what is the difference between new stream and classic stream? Well, with new stream, it's built on top of SharePoint and OneDrive. This means that the way you store a video file is exactly the same as how you would store, say, a Word document. This way too, the way you share a video, the way you set permissions, the way you comment on a video is exactly the same as other types of content stored within SharePoint and OneDrive. It's also now much easier to get back to video content. Videos are now part of the Microsoft Graph. This means that when you go to office.com or the new Edge tab page, you'll now see videos in the recommended section under recent files. Also, if you go to search, you'll now see videos in the search results. If you click into a people card, you'll see videos there as well. So videos are now just like any other content that you would store in SharePoint or OneDrive. Classic Stream, on the other hand, was a completely separate portal at stream.microsoft.com. All of your video files were stored in a completely separate location. This meant that the management of videos, so setting permissions, sharing, all of that was done in a different way. Also, you didn't find your videos in nearly as many places. Now, unlike New Coke versus Classic Coke, here New Stream is going to be the winner, and Classic Stream will eventually go away. To get started with Stream, head to the website stream.office.com, and here we land on the New Stream Start page. In the top right-hand corner, here you have the option to go back to the Classic Experience, if you would like to see what that looks like. But once again, that's eventually going away, so we might as well stick with the new experience. At the top of the page, you'll see the recommended section. And look at that, it's recommending a video with me. That must mean that the algorithm is working pretty well. Kidding aside, recommended will show you videos that you've recently looked at, that others have shared with you. Maybe a video that's trending in your organization, so it could show up there for a variety of reasons. Down below, you'll see all of your video content. You have different categories that you can click through and you could also filter your video list. Coming very soon, in the top left-hand corner, there will be a new button which will allow you to create a new video. You'll be able to record your screen and your webcam simultaneously. Today, there are a few different ways to create a stream video. You can simply drag and drop a video file from your computer onto the stream start page and that'll upload the video into your OneDrive. You can also just go directly to OneDrive and you can upload a video into there. You could also go to SharePoint and then you can upload a video there. You could also go into Microsoft Teams into a channel and you can upload a video there, which behind the scenes is uploading your video into SharePoint. When you do that, all of these become stream videos. It's the same concept of say you upload a Word document, but instead of a Word document, here you're just uploading a video file. You can also create a stream video directly from a meeting in Microsoft Teams. 
In Microsoft Teams, when you record a meeting, it'll automatically save it in your OneDrive account under the Recordings folder, and this also qualifies as a stream video. The neat thing about doing it this way is you'll get an automatic transcript of your meeting. Now that you've created your video, getting back to your videos is really simple. You can go to stream.office.com and here on the homepage, you can navigate back to your videos. You can also go directly to OneDrive or SharePoint and you can get back to your videos there. But this is one of my favorites. You can also use Microsoft Search to search for your video. You can search against the title, any metadata, or even the words said within the video. Remember, you get a transcript of any of your recordings, and so you can search on that as well. You could also search for an individual, and you can see videos show up in their people card. So once again, there are many different ways to get back to videos. Now that you have one of your video files in OneDrive and SharePoint, you have access to all of these different management tools. Here, I'll go down to one of my videos, and when I click on the ellipsis, here I can share the video. I can copy a link. I could manage permissions. So who has access to this file? I could also download, delete, automate, and I have a bunch of other options as well. When I click on the video, I get some really basic analytics over on the side. For example, I could see how many views the video has gotten, and I could also see what is the viewership retention of this video. Now, once again, these analytics are very basic, especially if you compare it to YouTube, but there are requests to make these analytics richer. Now that you have a video in stream, we're ready to spread the word, and there are a few different ways that you can do this. The easiest way is simply sharing directly from OneDrive or SharePoint. Here I have one of my video files. Once again, I can click on the ellipsis and I can simply select share. Here I can choose who will have access to this file. You could even make it so someone outside of your organization can access your video file. Here I can simply type in a few names or down at the bottom, I can simply copy the link and then I could say, send this in an email message. A little more complex, but also a good way to share a video file. You can integrate your video file directly into a SharePoint site using a file viewer web part. And look at this beautiful video on this Kevin Cookie Company webpage. Now that you've distributed your video, your audience, when they click on the video, they'll see the stream video player. Down in the bottom left hand corner, you have all of your standard controls to play and stop a video. Over on the right hand side, you can turn captions on or off. You can also adjust the playback speed. And right up here, you can also view a full transcript for a meeting. If you click on the eye icon, this will open up a pane over on the side. And here you can leave a comment against the video. Now, some of these features are only currently available for meetings recorded through Microsoft Teams. However, this functionality should come to all videos soon. That was a quick look at how you can get started using Stream. And you probably noticed as we walked through this that it's still very much a product in development and they have a lot of features coming up really soon. You can see a full roadmap of what's next by clicking on the link up above or down below in the description. Another interesting piece of the puzzle, Microsoft recently made an acquisition of a company called ClipChamp. It's a very easy to use video editor that has lots of stock footage, overlays. It basically makes pulling together videos really easy and simple. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if they integrate this product into Microsoft Stream at some point. And I also wouldn't be surprised if it becomes available for free as part of a Microsoft 365 subscription. All right, well, that's how you can get started working with video in Microsoft 365 using the new stream experience. To watch more videos like this, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.